Holy cares. It's so freaking pud. Hello, listeners. I'm Charles. Chapter 8 is special. A special chapter calls for a special filler episode. In lieu of a normal episode, we have a lovely educational reading of Chapter 8, read by Helmet Condenser. If you find that during your listening experience, your soul is attempting to leave your body because you can't take the pain anymore, fear not. Be strong, because at the end of this reading of Chapter 8, there is a palate cleanser of some fanfiction that co-caster Chad has written and narrated for us. Normal broadcasting will resume next week when we criticize Chapter 8 as we've criticized all the other chapters. So, listeners, the time has come for you to listen to the work of art that is Chapter 8 of Fifty Shades of Grey. Enjoy. 17 U.S.C. 107. Notwithstanding the provisions of Section 17 U.S.C. 106 and 17 U.S.C. 106, a the fair use of a copyrighted work, including such use by reproduction, copies, or phone records, or by any other means specified by that section for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, including multiple copies for classroom use, scholarship, or research, is not infringement of copyright. In determining whether the use made of a work in any particular case is a fair use, the factors to be considered shall include the purpose and character of the use, including whether such use is of a commercial nature or is for nonprofit educational purposes, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and sustainability of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole, and the effect of the use upon the potential market or for value of the copyrighted work. The fact that a work is unpublished not itself bar of finding a fair use of such finding is made upon the consideration of all the above factors. Chapter eight. Christian is running both his hands through his hair and pacing up and down his study. Two hands. That's double exasperation. His usual concrete control seems to have slipped a notch. I don't understand why you didn't tell me he castigates me. The subject never came up. I'm not in the habit of revealing my sexual status to everyone I meet. I mean, we hardly know each other. I'm staring at my hands. Why am I feeling guilty? Why is he so mad? I peek up at him. Well, you know a lot more about me now, he snaps. His mouth presses into a hard line. I knew you were inexperienced, but a virgin! He says it like it's a really dirty word. Hell, Anna, I just showed you, he groans. May God forgive me. Have you ever been kissed, apart from by me? Of course I have. I try my best to look affronted. Okay, maybe twice. And a nice young man hasn't swept you off your feet? I just don't understand. You're 21, nearly 22. You're beautiful. He runs his hand through his hair again. Beautiful. I flush with pleasure. Christian Grey thinks I'm beautiful. I knot my fingers together, staring at them hard, trying to conceal my goofy grin. Perhaps he's nearsighted. My subconscious has reared its nearly ridiculously overly complicated word head. Jesus Christ. Where is she when I needed her? And you're seriously discussing what you want to do. When you have no experience, his brows knit together. How have you avoided sex? Tell me, please. I shrug. No one's really, you know, come up to scratch. Only you, and you turn out to be some kind of monster. I should note that that section there, sandwiched between quotes, is her internal voice coming out of nowhere. What the fuck? Why are you so angry with me? I whisper. I'm not angry with you. I'm angry with myself. I just assumed, he sighs. Then he regards me shrewdly and shakes his head. Do you want to go, he asks, his voice gentle. No, unless you want me to, I murmur. Oh no, I don't want to leave. Of course not, I like having you here. He frowns as he says this and then glances at his watch. It's late, and he turns to look at me. You're biting your lip. His voice is husky, and he's eyeing me speculatively. Sorry. Don't apologize. It's just that I want to bite it too. Hard. I gasp. How can he say things like that to me and not expect me to be affected? Come, he murmurs. What? We're going to rectify the situation right now. What do you mean? What situation? Your situation, Anna. I'm going to make love to you. No. Oh. The floor is falling away. I'm in a situation. I'm holding my breath. That is, if you want to. I mean, I don't want to push my luck. I thought you didn't make love. I thought you fucked hard. I swallow, my mouth suddenly dry. He gives me a wicked grin, the effects of which travel all the way down there. I can make an exception, or maybe we'll combine the two. We'll see. I really want to make love to you. Please, come to bed with me. I want our arrangement to work, but you really need to have some idea what you're getting yourself into. We can start your training tonight with the basics. 
This doesn't mean I've come over all hearts and flowers. It's a means to an end, but one that I want, and hopefully you do too. His gray gaze is intense. I flush. Oh my, wishes do come true. But I haven't done all the things you require from your list of rules. My voice is all breathy, hesitant. Forget about the rules. Forget all those details for tonight. I want you. I've wanted you since you fell into my office, and I know you want me. You wouldn't be sitting here calmly discussing punishment and hard limits if you didn't. Please, Anna, spend the night with me. He holds his hand out to me. His eyes are bright, fervent, excited, and I put my hand in his. He pulls me up and into his arms so I can feel the length of his body against mine, the swift action taking me by surprise. His fingers round the nape of my neck, winds my ponytail around his wrist, and gently pulls so I'm forced to look up at him. He gazes down at me. You are one brave young woman, he whispers. I am in awe of you. His words are like some kind of incendiary device. My blood flames. The flaming blood of Jesus Christ. He leans down and kisses my lips gently, and he sucks my lower lip. I want to bite this lip, he murmurs against my mouth, and carefully he tugs at it with his teeth. I moan, and he smiles. Please, Anna, let me make love to you. Yes, I whisper, because that's why I'm here. His smile is triumphant as he releases me and takes my hand and leads me through the apartment. His bedroom is vast. The ceiling height windows look out on a lit up, high rise Seattle. The walls are white, and the furnishings are pale blue. The enormous bed is ultra modern, made of rough gray wood, like driftwood, four posts, but no canopy. On the wall above it is a stunning painting of the sea. I'm quaking like a leaf. This is it. Finally, after all this time, I'm going to do it with none other than Christian Grey. My breath is shallow, and I can't take my eyes off of him. He removes his watch and places it on top of a chest of drawers that matches the bed, and removes his jacket, placing it on a chair. He's dressed in his white linen shirt and jeans. He is heart-stoppingly beautiful. His dark copper hair is a mess, his shirt hanging out, his gray eyes bold and dazzling. He steps out of his Converse shoes and reaches down and takes off his socks individually. Christian Gray's feet! Wow. What is it about naked feet? Turning, he gazes at me, his expression soft. I assume you're not on the pill. What? Shit. I didn't think so. He opens up the top drawer of the chest and removes a packet of condoms. He gazes at me intently. Be prepared, he murmurs. Do you want the blinds drawn? I don't mind, I whisper. I thought you didn't let anyone sleep in your bed. Who says we're going to sleep? He murmurs softly. Oh, holy hell. He strolls slowly towards me, confident, sexy, eyes blazing, and my heart begins to pound. My blood's pumping around my body. Desire, thick and hot, pools in my belly. He stands in front of me, staring down into my eyes. He's so freaking hot. Let's get this jacket off, shall we? He says softly, and takes a hold of the lapels and gently slides my jacket off my shoulders. He places it on the chair. Do you have any idea how much I want you, Anna Steele? He whispers. My breath hitches. I cannot take my eyes off of his. He reaches up and gently runs his fingers down my cheek to my chin. Do you have any idea what I'm going to do to you? He adds, caressing my chin. The muscles inside the deepest, darkest part of me clench in the most delicious fashion. The pain is so sweet and sharp I want to close my eyes, but I'm hypnotized by his gray eyes staring fervently into mine. Leaning down, he kisses me. His lips are demanding, firm and slow, molding mine. He starts unbuttoning my shirt while he places feather-like kisses across my jaw, my chin, and the corners of my mouth. Slowly, he peels it off me and lets it fall to the floor. He stands back and gazes at me. I'm in the pale blue, lacy, perfect fit bra. Thank heavens. Oh, Anna, he breathes. You have the most perfect skin, pale and flawless. I want to kiss every single inch of it. I flush. Oh my, why did he say he couldn't make love? 
I will do anything he wants. He grasps my hair tie, pulls it free, and gasps as my hair cascades down around my shoulders. I like brunettes, he murmurs, and both of his hands are in my hair, grasping each side of my head. His kiss is demanding, his tongue and lips coaxing mine. I moan, and my tongue tentatively meets his. He puts his arms around me and hauls me against his body, squeezing me tightly. One hand remains in my hair, the other travels down my spine to my waist and down to my behind. His hand flexes over my backside and squeezes gently. He holds me against his hips, and I feel his erection, which he languidly pushes into me. I moan once more into his mouth. I can hardly contain the riotous feelings, or is it the hormones that rampage through my body? I want him so badly. Gripping his upper arms, I feel his biceps. He's surprisingly strong. Muscular. Tentatively, I move my hands up to his face and into his hair. Holy Moses. It's so soft, unruly. I tug gently and he groans. He eases me towards the bed, until I feel it behind my knees. I think he's going to push me down onto it, but he doesn't. Releasing me, he suddenly drops to his knees. He grabs my hips with both hands and runs his tongue around my navel, then gently nips his way to my hip bone, and then across my belly to my other hip bone. Ah, I groan. Seeing him on his knees in front of me, feeling his mouth on me, it's so unexpected, comma, comma, and hot. My hands stay in his hair, pulling gently as I try to quiet my too loud breathing. He gazes up at me through impossibly long lashes, his eyes a scorching, smoky gray. His hands reach up and undo the button on my jeans, and he leisurely pulls down the zipper. Zoop. Without taking his eyes off mine, his hands move beneath the waistband, skimming me and moving my behind. His hands glide slowly down my backside to my thighs, removing my jeans as they go. I cannot look away. He stops and licks his lips, never breaking eye contact. Then he leans forward, running his nose up the apex between my thighs. I feel him. There. You smell so good, he murmurs as he closes his eyes. A look of pure pleasure on his face, and I practically convulse. He reaches up and tugs the duvet off the bed, then pushes me gently so I fall onto the mattress. Still kneeling, he grasps my foot and undoes my converse, pulling off my shoe and sock. I raise myself up on my elbows to see what he's doing. I'm panting, wanting. He lifts my foot up by the heel and runs his thumbnail around my instep. It's almost painful but I feel the movement echoed in my groin. I gasp, not taking his eyes off mine. Again, he runs his tongue along the instep and then his teeth. Shit. I groan. How can I feel this? There. I fall back onto the bed, moaning. I hear a soft chuckle. Oh, Anna, what I could do to you, he whispers. He removes my other shoe and sock, then stands and removes my jeans. I'm lying on his bed dressed only in my bra and panties, and he's staring down at me. You're very beautiful, Anastasia Steele. I can't wait to be inside you. Holy shit. His words. He's so seductive. He takes my breath away. Show me how you pleasure yourself. What? I frown. Don't be coy, Anna. Show me, he whispers. I shake my head. I don't know what you mean. My voice is hoarse. I hardly recognize it, laced with desire. How do you make yourself come? I want to see. I shake my head. I don't. I mumble. He raises his eyebrows, astonished for a moment, and his eyes darken, and he shakes his head in disbelief. Well, we'll have to see what we can do about that. His voice is soft, challenging, a delicious, sensual threat. He undoes the buttons of his jeans and slowly pulls his jeans down, his eyes on mine the whole time. He leans over me, grasping each of my ankles, and quickly jerks my legs apart and crawls onto the bed between my legs. He hovers over me. I am squirming with need. Keep still, he murmurs, and then leans down and kisses the inside of my thigh, trailing kisses up over the thin lacy material of my panties, kissing me. Oh, I can't keep still. How can I not move? I wriggle beneath him. We're going to have to work on keeping you still, baby. He trails kisses up my belly, and his tongue dips into my navel, 
Still, he's heading north, kissing me across my torso. My skin is burning. I'm flushed, too hot, too cold, and I'm clawing at the sheet beneath me. He's laying down beside me, and his hand trails up from my hip to my waist and up to my breast. He gazes down at me, his expression unreadable, and gently cups my breast. You fit my hand perfectly, Anastasia, he murmurs and dips his index finger into the cup of my bra and gently yanks it down, freeing my breast, but the underwire and fabric of the cup force it upward. His finger moves to my other breast and repeats the process. My breasts swell and my nipples harden under his steady gaze. I am trussed up by my own bra. Very nice, he whispers appreciatively, and my nipples harden even more. He blows very gently on one as his hand moves to the, my other breast and his thumb slowly rolls the end of my nipple, elongating it. I groan, feeling the sweet sensation all the way to my groin. I am so wet. Oh please, I beg internally as my fingers clasp the sheet tighter. His lips close around my other nipple and he tugs. I nearly convulse. Let's see if we can make you come like this, he whispers, continuing his slow, sensual assault. My nipples bear the delicious brunt of his deft fingers and lips, setting alight every single nerve ending in my body so that my whole body sings with sweet agony. He just doesn't stop. Oh, please, I beg, and pull my head back, my mouth open as I groan, my legs stiffening. Holy hell, what is happening to me? Let go, baby, he murmurs. His teeth close around my nipple, and his thumb and finger pull hard, and I fall apart in his hands, my body convulsing and shattering into a thousand pieces. That's pretty fucking gross. He kisses me, deeply, his tongue in my mouth, absorbing my cries. Oh my, that was extraordinary. Now I know what all the fuss is about. He gazes down at me, a satisfied smile on his face, while I'm sure there's nothing but gratitude and awe on mine. You are very responsive, he breathes. You're going to have to learn to control that, and it's going to be so much fun teaching you how. He kisses me again. My breathing is still ragged as I come down from my orgasm. His hand moves down my waist to my hips, then cups me, cups me intimately. Jeez. His finger slips through the fine lace and slowly circles around me. There. Briefly, he closes his eyes as his breathing hitches. You are so deliciously wet. God, I want you. He thrusts a finger inside me, and I cry out as he does it again and again. He paws my clitoris, and I cry out once more. He pushes inside me harder and harder still. I groan. Suddenly, he sits up and tugs my panties off and throws them on the floor. Pulling off his box of briefs, his erection springs free. Holy cow. He reaches over to his bedside table and grabs a foil packet, then moves between my legs, spreading them further apart. He kneels up and pulls a condom onto his considerable length. Oh no, will it? How? Don't worry, he breathes, his eyes on mine. You expand too. He leans down, his hands on either side of my head, so he's hovering over me, staring into my eyes, his jaw clenched, eyes burning. It's only now that I register that he's still wearing his shirt. You really want to do this? He asks softly. Please, I beg. Pull your knees up, he orders softly, and I'm quick to obey. I'm going to fuck you now, Miss Steele, he murmurs as he positions the head of his erection at the entrance of my sex. Hard, he whispers, and he slams into me. <laughs> I cry as, a, as I feel a weird pinching sensation deep inside me as he rips through my virginity. He stills, gazing down at me, his eyes bright with ecstatic triumph. His mouth is open slightly and his breathing is harsh. He groans, You're so tight. You okay? I nod, my eyes wide, my hands on his forearms. I feel so full. He stays still, letting me acclimate to the intrusive, overwhelming feeling of him inside me. I'm going to move, baby. He breathes after a moment, his voice tight. Oh. He eases back with exquisite slowness, and he closes his eyes and groans and thrusts into me again. I cry out a second time, and he stills. More, he whispers, his voice raw. 
Yes, I breathe. He does it once more, and stills again. I groan, my body accepting him. Oh, I want this. Again, he breathes. Yes, it's a plea. And he moves, but this time he doesn't stop. He shifts onto his elbows so I can feel his weight on me, holding me down. He moves slowly at first, easing himself in and out of me. As I grow accustomed to the alien feeling, my hips move tentatively to meet his. He speeds up. I moan as he pounds on, picking up speed, merciless, a relentless rhythm, and I keep up, meeting his thrusts. He grasps my head between his hands and kisses me, hard, his teeth pulling at my lower lip again. He shifts slightly, and I can feel something building deep inside me, like before. I start to stiffen as he thrusts on and on. My body quivers, bows, a sheen of sweat gathers over me. Oh my. I didn't know it would feel like this. I didn't know it could feel as good as this. My thoughts are scattering, but there's only one sensation. Only him. Only me. Oh please, I stiffen. Come for me, Anna, he whispers breathlessly, and I unravel at his words, exploding around him as I climax and splinter into a million pieces underneath him. Jesus Christ, the second time in the chapter. As he comes, he calls out my name, thrusting hard, then stilling as he empties himself into me. I'm still panting, trying to slow my breathing, my thumping heart, my thoughts are in riotous disarray. Wow, that was astounding. I open my eyes, and he has his forehead pressed against mine, his eyes closed, his breathing ragged. Christian's eyes flicker open and gaze down at me, dark but soft. He's still inside me. Leaning down, he gently presses a kiss against my forehead and then slowly pulls out of me. Ooh. I wince at the unfamiliarity. Did I hurt you? Christian asks as he lies down beside me, propped on one elbow. He tucks a stray strand of hair behind my ear, and I have to grin, widely. You are asking if you hurt me? The irony is not lost on me, he smiles sardonically. Seriously, are you okay? His eyes are intense, probing, demanding even. I stretch out beside him, feeling loose-limbed, my bones like jelly, but I'm relaxed, deeply relaxed. I grin at him. I can't stop grinning, now that I know what all the fuss is about. Two orgasms, coming apart the seams, like the spin cycle on a washing machine. Wow. I had no idea what my body was capable of, or that it could be wound so tightly and released so violently, so gratifyingly. The pleasure was indescribable. You are biting your lip, and you haven't answered me. He's frowning. I grin up at him, impishly. His he looks glorious with his tousled hair, burning narrow gray eyes, and serious dark expression. I'd like to do that again, I whisper. For a moment, I think I see a fleeting look of relief on his face, before the shutters come down, and he gazes at me through hooded eyes. Would you now, Miss Steele? He murmurs dryly. He leans down and kisses me very gently at the corner of my mouth. Demanding little thing, aren't you? Turn on your front. I blink at him momentarily and then I turn over. He unhooks my bra and runs his hand down my back to my behind. You really have the most beautiful skin, he murmurs. He shifts so that one of his legs pushes between mine, and he's half lying across my back. I can feel the buttons of his shirt pressing into me as he gathers my hair off of his face and kisses my bare shoulder. Why are you wearing your shirt? I ask. He stills. After a beat, he shuffles off his shirt and he lies back down on me. I feel his warm skin against mine. Hmm, it feels heavenly. He has a light dusting of hair across his chest, which tickles my back. So you want me to fuck you again? He whispers in my ear, and he begins to trail feather-like kisses around my ear and down my neck. His hand moves down, skimming my waist, over my hip, and down my thigh to the back of my knee. He pushes my knee up higher and my breath hitches. Oh my, what's he doing now? He shifts so that he's between my legs, pressed against my back, and his hand travels up my thigh to my behind. He caresses my cheek slowly, then trails his fingers down between my legs. I'm going to take you from behind, Anastasio, he murmurs, and with his other hand he grasps my hair at the nape and a fist, and pulls gently, holding me in place. I cannot move my head. I am pinioned beneath him, helpless. You are mine, he whispers, only mine. Don't forget it. His voice is intoxicating, his words heady, seductive. I feel his growing erection against my thigh. 
His long fingers re reach round to gently massage my clitoris, circling slowly. His breath is soft against my face as he slowly nips at me along my jaw. You smell divine. He nuzzles behind my ear. He rubs against me round and round. Reflexively, my hips start to circle, mirroring his hand as excruciating pleasure spikes through my blood like adrenaline. Keep still, he orders, his voice soft but urgent, and slowly he inserts his thumb inside me, rotating it round and round, stroking the front wall of my vagina. The effect is mind-blowing, all the energy concentrating on this one small space inside my body. I moan. You like it like this? He asks softly, his teeth grazing my outer ear, and he starts to flex his thumb slowly, in, out, in, out, his fingers still circling. I close my eyes, trying to keep breathing under control, trying to absorb the disordered, chaotic sensations that his fingers are unleashing on me, fire coursing through my body. I moan again. You're so wet, so quickly, so responsive. Oh, Anastasia, I like that. I like that a lot, he whispers. I want to stiffen my legs, but I can't move. He's pinning me down, keeping up a constant, slow, tortuous rhythm. It's absolutely exquisite. I moan again, and he moves suddenly. Open your mouth, he commands and thrusts his thumb into my mouth. My eyes fly open, blinking wildly. See how you taste. He breathes against my ear. But how's it taste? Suck me, baby. His thumb presses on my tongue, and my mouth closes round him, sucking wildly. I taste the saltiness on his thumb and the faint metallic tang of blood. Holy fuck. This is wrong, but holy hell is it erotic. I want to fuck your mouth, Anastasia, and I will soon. His voice is hoarse, raw, his breath more disjointed. Fuck my mouth. I moan and bite down on him. He gasps and he pulls my hair tighter, painfully, so I release him. Naughty, sweet girl, he whispers, then reaches over to the bedside table for a foil packet. Stay still, don't move, he orders as he releases my hair. He rips the foil while I'm breathing hard, my blood singing in my veins. The anticipation is exhilarating. He leans down, his weight on me again, and he grabs my hair, holding my head immobile. I cannot move. I'm enticingly ensnared by him, and he's poised and ready to take me once more. We're going to go real, real slow this time, Anastasia, he breathes. And slowly he eases into me, slowly, slowly, until he's buried in me, stretching, filling, relentless. I groan loudly. It feels deeper this time, delectable. I groan again, and he deliberately circles his hips and pulls back, pauses a beat, and then eases his way back in. He repeats this motion again and again. It's driving me insane. His teasing, deliberately slow thrusts, and the intermittent feeling of fullness is overwhelming. You feel so good, he groans, and my insides start to quiver. He pulls back and waits. Oh no, baby, not yet, he murmurs, and the quivering ceases. He, st he starts the whole delicious process again. Oh please, I beg. I'm not sure I can take much more. My body is wound so tight craving release. I want you sore, baby, he murmurs and continues his sweet, leisurely torment backward, forward. Every time you move tomorrow, I want you to be reminded that I've been here. Only me. You are mine. I groan. Please, Christian, I whisper. What do you want, Anastasia? Tell me. I groan again. He pulls out and moves slowly back into me, circling his hips once more. Tell me, he murmurs. You, please. He increases the rhythm infinitesimally, and his breathing becomes more erratic. My insides start quickening, and Christian picks up the rhythm. You are so sweet, he murmurs between each thrust. I want you so much, I moan. You are mine. Come for me, baby, he growls. His words are, un are my undoing, tipping me over the precipice. My body convulses around him and I come, loudly calling out a garbled version of his name into the mattress. And Christian follows with two sharp thrusts and he freezes, pouring himself into me as he finds his release. He collapses on top of me, his face in my hair. Fuck, Anna, he breathes. He pulls out of me immediately and rolls onto his side out of the bed. 
I pull my knees up to my chest, utterly spent, and immediately drift off or pass out into an exhausted sleep. When I wake, it's still dark. I have no idea how long I've slept. I stretch out beneath the duvet, and I feel sore, deliciously sore. Christian is nowhere to be seen. I sit up, staring out of the cityscape in front of me. There are fewer lights on amongst the skyscrapers, and there's a whisper of dawn in the east. I hear the music, the lilting notes of the piano. A sad, sweet lament. Bach, I think, but I'm not sure. I wrap the duvet around me and quietly pad down the corridor toward the big room. Christian is at the piano, completely lost in the music he's playing. His expression is sad and forlorn, like the music. His playing is stunning. Leaning against the wall at the, at the entrance, I listen, enraptured. He's such an accomplished musician. He sits naked, his body bathed in the warm light cast by a solitary, freestanding lamp beside the piano. But the rest of the large room in darkness, it's like he's on his own isolated little pool of light, untouchable, lonely, in a bubble. I pad quietly towards him, enticed by the sublime, melancholy music. I'm mesmerized, watching his long, skilled fingers as they find and gently press the keys, thinking how those same fingers have expertly handled and caressed my body. I flush and gasp at the memory and press my thighs together. He glances up, his unfathomable gray eyes bright, his expression unreadable. Sorry, I whisper. I didn't mean to disturb you. A frown flits across his face. Surely I should be saying that to you, he murmurs. He finishes playing and puts his hands on his legs. I notice now that he's wearing his PJ pants. He runs his fingers through his hair and stands. His pants hang from his hips, in that way. Oh my. My mouth goes dry as he casually strolls around the piano towards me. He has broad shoulders, narrow hips, and his abdominal muscles ripple as he walks. He really is stunning. You should be in bed, he admonishes. That was a beautiful piece. Bach? Transcription by Bach, but it's originally an oboe concerto by Alessandro Marcello. It was, an ex it was exquisite, but very sad. Such a melancholy melody. His lips quirk up a, in a half-smile. Bed, he orders. You'll be exhausted in the morning. I woke up and you weren't there. I find it difficult to sleep, and I'm not used to sleeping with anyone, he murmurs. I can't fathom his mood. He seems a little despondent, but it's difficult to tell in the darkness. Perhaps it was the tone of the piece he was playing. He puts his arm around me and gently walks me to the back of the bedroom. How long have you been playing? You play beautifully. Since I was six. Oh, Christian as a six-year-old boy. My mind conjures an image of a beautiful, copper-haired little boy with gray eyes and my heart melts. A moppet-haired kid who likes impossibly sad music. How are you feeling? He asks when we're back in the room. Switches on a side light. I'm good. We both glance down at the bed at the same time. There's blood on the sheets. Evidence of my lost virginity. I flush, embarrassed, pulling the duvet tight around me. Well, that's going to give Miss Jones something to think about. Christian mutters as he stands in front of me. He puts his hand under my chin and tips my head back, staring down at me. His eyes are intense as he examines my face. I realize that I've not seen his naked chest before. Instinctively, I reach out to run my fingers through the smattering of dark hair on his chest to see how it feels. Immediately, he steps back out of my reach. Get into bed. I'll come and lie down with you. His voice softens. He's, he, I drop my hand down and frown. I don't think I've ever touched his torso. He opens a chest of drawers and pulls out a t-shirt and quickly slips it on. Bed, he orders again. I climb back into bed trying not to think about the blood. He clambers in beside me and pulls me into his embrace, wrapping his arms around me so that I'm facing away from him. He kisses my hair gently, and he inhales deeply. Sleep, sweet Anastasia, he murmurs, and I close my eyes, but I can't help but feel a residual melancholy either from the music or his demeanor. Christian Grey has a sad side. <laughs>
Hello again, listeners. It's Charles again, listeners. I hope you had a great time, as great as I did, listening to that. Boy, remember when he gnawed on her foot? Remember that other time that Anna shattered into pieces? Wow, we are going to have so many memories to share with each other and talk about. Wow. Now, listeners, the thing you've all been waiting for. Fan fiction! By our lovely Chad. The piece is called In Which Christian Attempts to Buy a Carton of Milk. Listen and enjoy. In Which Christian Attempts to Obtain a Carton of Milk. Christian awoke early, feeling the sun on his face. His rippling chest muscles reflected the sunlight into the room, giving it a soft glow and perfectly highlighting every crevice and contour of his exquisite body. He sat himself up slowly, brushing the comforter off with the slightest flick of his wrist. But it wasn't a comforter. Wait a moment, Christian said. This isn't a comforter. Silently, Christian lowered his head. Yet again, mysterious women occupied his bed. How did these women get here? Christian uttered. It happened every morning. Christian brushed one of them aside as he rose for a shower. I don't need all of these women, he said as he placed the remaining women on his ever-increasing spare woman pile. He went to his shower, easing open the door, which gave a breathy sigh. Somehow, Christian had grabbed one of his multitude of available women. He never knew what they did with the shower doors, how they survived alone day after day in his apartment. Maybe they ate each other. Maybe they had evolved a form of erotosynthesis, producing some form of sustenance in their constantly elevated state of arousal, a state only sustainable in the presence of Christian. Christian sighed. That's the third one this week, he said solemnly. I've got to start taking fewer showers. He leaned the woman, stiffened with ecstasy, against the wall of the bathroom. Forget the shower. I just need a quick soak in the bath. Christian lamented to no one in particular. As the water flowed into the tub, Christian gazed at himself in the mirror, examining every inch of his face with a mixture of awe and boredom. I see the same face every day, he whispered, lowering himself into the tub. Christian withdrew his exposed buttocks immediately as he realized the tub was in fact a naked woman. She wasn't even full of water. All the water had run off of her due to the imperfect water-holding capabilities of the human form. A single tear escaped Christian's left eye. That tub was from Venice. Christian walked to the store, all the while wondering when the repairs to his car would be done, and if it would even make any difference in the long run. He always ended up destroying his cars in dangerous and totally unnecessary road races against any male he saw in another motor vehicle ever, the air between them thickening instantaneously into a palpable miasma of adolescent male posturing as they exchanged heated glances. Christian arrived at the only grocery store in town that he could frequent without feeling too self-conscious. It was the only one staffed entirely by individuals truly below Christian's social class. I need milk and eggs. Eggs. Christian dreaded the moment he would need to lift the eggs from their place on the shelf, picturing an explosion of breasts and butts as his freakish libido overpowered all women and seemingly obliterated the very fabric of reality, transforming the eggs to erogenous zones in his steady, competent hands. It always happened like that. As he moved through the aisles, he could feel others' eyes on him. They moved out of his way, mothers hurriedly ushering their children from his path, warning them not to look at him, promising them candy and video games if they just ignored him. Christian didn't mind, or at least not anymore. It was for their own good. As he turned the corner into the dairy section, he almost collided with a young woman. He spun gracefully out of the way, moving on instinct and training. The terrified young woman stared at him, falling, horrified, her knuckles turning white as she gripped her shopping cart with all her might. Her expression changed from one of terror to elation as she realized the perfect male specimen now blessing her eyes with its presence. In moments, her fall transformed into a swoon. Christian saw her in slow motion, his highly refined martial arts senses allowing him to take in every detail of every moment as if it were happening in bullet time a concept he'd first learned about watching The Matrix and later playing Max Payne. One of his senseis had referred to it as Kung Fu time, likening it to slow motion like in a film, you know, like all slow and tense and maybe even pretty. His sensei had been kind of an idiot. Of 
course, Kung Fu time also allowed him to see mistakes, stretching into what felt like an eternity. This time, he realized he'd dodged towards a display of oven fresh buns, and he threw his hands out to keep from smashing face first into them. With just the slightest touch of the edge of his hand, the elegantly arranged display of freshly baked buns collapsed, cascading and thudding around him. Christian was unhurt, of course, but his humiliation was thorough. He was cushioned by the warm, firm buns. Wait, Christian hesitated as he pulled himself up. These aren't made of bread. I'm sorry, Christian said quietly as he moved to clean up the mess. I'm really sorry. What Christian had initially taken for Market Fresh Costco brand buns were, in fact, piles of yeasty women basking in the fluorescent supermarket lights. A mop wielding store employee ran up to Christian. Just get lost. Don't you think you've done enough damage already? The store employee turned his back to Christian and began to mop up the perfectly browned buns. Christian turned to leave before the opposing male that had just violated Christian's own sacred male space realized whom he had had the great fortune to see before he could whip back around and challenge Christian with just a stare to a silent, impromptu, non homoerotically charged mopping contest. Christian turned to the woman he had dodged, who was still moaning and spasming on the floor behind her shopping cart, shaking in indescribable pleasure. Are you all right, ma'am? <laughs> the woman shrieked and clung to Christian as he approached her, abandoning her cart of groceries and presumably leaving her family to starve. Christian's shoulders fell as he lowered his head in quiet despair. Within moments, the woman had evaporated, like so many others before her, unable to cope with the sheer sexual energy exuded by Christian, even at his absolute nadir. He was embarrassed and sad. He headed directly to the milk, foregoing the eggs entirely. I'll just get this and leave. I can get the eggs another time. Christian reached for the milk. He picked it up. It wasn't a woman. So far, so good. Christian relaxed and felt the tension leave his body as he softly lowered the milk towards his chest, attempting to read the nutrition information. He felt a tug at his back. Instinctively, he whipped around, the milk carton exploding into a white, soppy mess all over his chest and arms as he whirled to see a young girl, holding a bunny, frozen in terror at his fast, panther-like turn, cultivated over years of practice in the deep hills of Japan, with the finest and oldest ninja clans that had ever existed, and now no longer existed, after he had annihilated them when they had grown greedy and reckless with power. The girl's eyes were wide with fear. She knew what her future held. Christian immediately changed to a stance of placation, motioning for the girl not to cry. I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry, little girl. Please don't cry. I just reacted. I'm sorry. But it was to no avail. The little girl let out a mournful moan as she ran off, tears streaming from her face. Mixing with the milk from Christian's crushed carton, a cloudy sea of a life too well examined. Curse this freakish beauty, this Adonis-like visage of mine. Damn you, God. Christian yelled in anguish towards the heavens. He shook his fists as hard as he could, feeling tears of his own begin to well at the corners of his eyes. He wanted to live a normal life. He wanted to be free of his burden. But he knew. He knew that the earth would not be complete without him, and so he wept and returned home after picking up another carton of milk waiting for the moment when women would lust after him again, would beg him for salvation, only to shun him the next day as a monster and a pariah. The world was a cruel place. Hello? Again! I really hope you enjoyed Chad's wonderful story. Hopefully, he'll make another one to read to you guys soon. That's it for this filler episode. Tune in next week to hear us criticizing Chapter 8. I promise you, it'll be a blast! Until then, hang on to your butts. This has been an episode of Holy Cast So Freaking Pod. Do 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 do